In this video I'm showing you what art supplies I pack when going on a trip, including a tip on how to pack liquid colors, show you all the art I did during my travels and sprinkle in some footage of the UK and Scotland. I hope you'll enjoy. Let's get to it. I bought this travel case last year in I think it was November or so and I bought it at Michael's and it was not cheap, I have to say. I think I, I purchased it for a little over 30 bucks. But it is so compact and you can stuff so many things in here that I really truly enjoy traveling with it. It comes with two zipper compartments and one I use for my sketchbook and this I purchased at Amazon and then I also decided on a whim that I would bring my homemade little travel sketchbook with me which is just watercolor paper and that I stitched together and there is a tutorial for this on uh, Creation CC's channel uh, for this and I will link this below because it's so handy to have um, when you travel and you just want to you know be creative but you you don't want to commit to bringing a whole sketchbook so I leave the link for this one below and I didn't think I was gonna use this as much as I did because I had prepped a few pages in my sketchbook because the goal was for me to fill the sketchbook a little bit more because I haven't really touched it yet um, I ended up not doing that <laughs> so it just goes to show that even if you are traveling light when you want to bring your art materials with you bring a couple of options because your mood you just don't know what you're gonna be in um, so that's my advice um, but let me show you what the other side looks like. So I have just, um, I brought some washi tape with me and a uh, pencil sharpener and an eraser, uh, which I stored on, on this side. And the reason why, because I did run out on one side because I had quite a bit of stuff in here um, already. And I could have probably skimmed this down a little bit because I brought two sets of watercolor pencils which I probably could have, I could have done without these. I really enjoyed working with just these. They had just have a bigger variety of colors that I was able to choose from. Unfortunately, I can't link these because I bought these in Switzerland last time I went. So if you're in uh, or around Switzerland, um, keep a lookout for these. I really enjoyed the way they interact with the water. So I put all of my color pencils in here and then I brought my water pen with me because watercolor pencils you know you gotta have a water pen with you and I wasn't sure where we're gonna be staying at so you know I was like okay I'm just gonna bring this one also my brushes were too too big to fit in here I brought my trusty dotting tools because lately you know me I just love working with these what can I say so they found a place in here a mechanical pencil and then my fine liner pens and the way I arranged them in here was from smallest to largest tip um, and it was just very handy to have it all sorted because I could just pull out the smallest size, which is the 005, was on the end here and then I it would go up in size, which is just handy when you are um, organized like that. I'm talking so fast, I'm out of breath. <laughs> I don't know why. So these are my um, Sakura Micron and then I brought my Faber-Castells, which I just love these days. And then I brought my um, Uniball Signo white pen, but I think I grabbed the wrong one. It wasn't working for me and I'm not sure if it was because of um, those watercolor pencils 
Um, but it just, it gave me a little bit of a harder time. And you know, if you've ever worked with these, how they can be a little bit uh, temperamental is the word that I'm looking for. Um, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. So anyway. But what I had alluded, I wanted to share with you is, and this only applies to if you uh, want to bring wet paint with you, or if you are like me and you've discovered dotting tools and you are obsessed with making your little dots and uh, want to bring your acrylics with you. I've used these in my latest videos and I just, I love them. And I didn't want to travel without, but I, it was a dilemma because I wasn't gonna bring anything liquidy. And I was looking for a container to store them in that would not spill and that would um, keep my paints moist, you guys stroke of genius okay contact lens cases and it was such a great decision they shut tight so nothing will spill and nothing will dry out and what i did is i just put a little bit because you don't need much when you're just dotting i put a little bit of white and a little bit of my gold and then this one just had the black in it on one side. And then when I used it, I just used what was in the cap. And it was perfect. It was a perfect little amount to, to dip my tool in. I filled these, I wanna say almost four weeks now, and it's still nice and wet in here. It was such an easy, and safe place to store my acrylic paints. So I highly recommend this. Don't throw these out if you have them. They are good for other things. <laughs> and they fit in my case, which was important as well. So I uh, had stored these over here and then I closed it up and then I just put the rest on this side and it was perfect and that was all that I needed. And then I hadn't intended on um, doing a lot of art supply shopping, but it just so happened that I ended up finding an art supply store in Bath. It was such a cute little art store. And if you're ever in Bath, go check them out. The ladies that worked in there were so helpful and just super friendly. And I ended up buying a masking pen which I didn't have yet. I, I have the masking fluid which I bought on Amazon here in the States but sometimes it's a little bit cumbersome especially if you are just wanting to mask smaller spaces or um, if you want to be a little bit more precise. And then I found this handmade paper and they had it in all different sizes and I liked the size and I figured I was hopeful guys <laughs> I thought I would fill all of this and I was like what if I run out of paper <laughs> and then I had um, realized that my water pen the tip was too big for certain things and so I uh, wanted a, a small travel brush and I found one and this is a, a number one. I really enjoy this guy as well. So those were the only three things that I purchased while traveling that were art supplies.
So let me show you what I worked on. I was hopeful that I would fill this up or at least, you know, make a good dent in it. And I did prep a few pages at home because I, my feeling was I mostly want to practice some more doodles. So I ended up um, prepping a few pages. I'm gonna skip the first one because I already filled that one. So I went and did this one and I just used my watercolor palette that I had at home for this. I did not use the pencils for this stuff. Um, but yeah, I just wanted some, uh, some different backgrounds. And then I did some with um, flowers, which I thought would be kind of fun and different. And then my kid did this one one day. I said, you have nothing to do. Why don't you paint me a background? And, and then uh, I did this one. I'm not super fond of it, but I figured I could make it interesting with um, doodles. And then of course, circles, which are always kind of fun, no matter how you end up doodling on top. And then this one, and this one. So just different styles that uh, would challenge me to doodle in different ways. And then I ran out of ideas. I realized that this whole spread was way too big for me to work on. It just would take forever to fill. And this is exactly what happened with this first page. So again, I just did circles. I started doodling on it. And while I love all the doodles that I did, I especially enjoyed this one. This one looked really cool and 3D kind of. It turned out to take too long. I realized I was really glad that I brought my little doodle sketchbook with me. So this one had just some color swatches on one side and I had left the other side empty and so I filled it up a little bit more with the watercolor pencils on the other side and I have already you know filled it up quite a bit I think this was the first one that I did and it just had splotches of purple and green and yellow and then I came up with this, with this guy here. And if you follow me on Instagram, you would have already seen these. Um, but I just wanted to bring you up close a little bit more. And you see, I used the dots. The other side did kind of um, spoil my white dots over here, but that's okay, I can go over it again. And this one had looked like a butterfly, so I did the butterfly-ish type of doodles on this one, and I had made an oopsie here, um, which I'm a little sad about, but oh well. This one started out with just green ovals, and when I initially started, painting in this booklet, I had something different in mind. I had not started my neurographic lines at that point and I was just, you know, putting down some shapes, thinking I would use each individual shape to doodle something in. Now that some time has passed, I decided to do something completely different with it and I love this even more than my initial plan that I had had.
This one actually I finished in the airplane coming back home. It started out as just a square of different blues done with the watercolor pencils and I didn't want to put another square on top so I decided to put um, something round on it. It could have also looked cool with a triangular shape but I wanted to bring back my circle design here for this one. And I really like that I just stuck with, I call these uh, cobblestones, the cobblestone style and lines and my dots. That's all I used for these three uh, doodle types. This one, you can see I wasn't into it and I'm not sure if the um, shapes ended up being too small for me to, to uh, doodle on, but I lost interest in that and I didn't get to the circles on this side. These two are kind of busy when you look at them both at once, but if you just cover this guy up, each individual piece looks a little less busy. It started out with rectangles kind of funky and I really enjoyed this one as well and let me tell you why it started out again as just shapes of rectangles and then I doodled over it and I really enjoyed the oval shapes that I created in this guy then I was able to kind of tie it in with these ovals here and then more ovals here and then also these little doodles here were more oblong so in the end I felt like it just tied it all in really nicely and it's I like the muted colors on this and I like how the gold ties in with this is it mauve so anyway I really enjoyed how this one turned out so Sometimes you just don't know what your background turn, will turn into and that's what I love about these doodles. This one started out as triangles and again I think my my thought behind it was to use it as trees 
way back when I um, created this background and look at it now nothing like trees at all so the reason why I am pointing this out is to show you that you shouldn't get caught up or tie yourself down with a shape that you're initially painting because if you use the background and then put something completely different on top it will bring out a different style altogether i could have outlined these triangles and made them more pronounced but then i don't know it just i think it would have been too busy not that this is not i hope what i'm trying to say will come through that just because a shape is a circle shape or a rectangular shape or a triangular shape doesn't mean necessarily that you have to stick with the shape you can put something completely different on top and then this one was the last one that I did and I started out just um, drawing squares with two different greens and I laid them out as kind of a pathway and then I came in and I did my neurographic lines in the void and then I went back in and filled the empty spaces in with more squares with my fine liner pen and then I decided to bring in lines and just follow them, follow the shapes of my neural lines on one side. <clears throat> and to finish it up, I brought in my dotting tool and found the leftover empty spaces and just put in some dots. And that's how this one turned out. I like that I left these neural lines empty. So that is what I did um, on my travels. I hope you enjoyed the little photographs that I um, put in in between my ramblings just to give you a little bit of a break. <laughs> I had a lot to say in this video. Next video is probably going to be a mini haul because um, I have also purchased a few things since I've been back. There's new paper that I want to try out with watercolors and with my alcohol inks. So um, yeah, but then we will go back to our regularly scheduled uh, videos of creating art. So thank you so much for um, staying with me all the way through and I will see you in the next one.